Hello. Good morning. Is this Chris? This is. Hey, Chris. This is Andrea, one of the nurses from Swedish. Hi there. Hi. Looks like you're coming in to see us tomorrow for Dr. Lou. I am. I am. And do you know what time they want you to check in? I think it's like 5.30 or 5.45. Yeah, it looks like you're going to be the first surgery of the day. And then did they also give you your instructions on when to stop eating and drinking and the showers? Yeah, so I have like the surgical soap situation that I do like a full body wash of tonight. And then I wash my hair tomorrow, I believe, when I get up. And then I stop eating and drinking at midnight tonight. And do you happen to know about how tall you are and how much you weigh? I'm like six foot six one, and I haven't weighed myself recently, but I think I'm like in the 160 ballpark. Six one, wow, I'm only five three. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I mean, shoot, five seven is tall for me, you know? It's like, geez, what's life like up there? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. That's my time to shine. There you go. And I have no shame in asking tall people. <laughs> sure. Oh, sheesh. All right. Well, when you get here tomorrow, just bring in your picture ID and insurance card for verification. Okay. And then you will have a chance to talk to the doctor before they get started if you have any last minute questions. Awesome. Great. All right. Well, we will see you here first thing tomorrow and get this all done for you. Okay. Party on. Thank you so much. All righty, Chris. We'll see you then. All right. See you, Andrea. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. She had a bit ready. <laughs> she, exactly. She's trying out the tight five. She's getting ready for the chuckle hut tonight. She's like, what's the deal with tall people? <laughs> Today is Thursday, January 5th, the day before I get my face ripped off. Very, very, very nervous. Um, but I think the anticipation's worse than like actually getting there and getting it over with. Not really had any surgeries before other than having like my wisdom teeth out. So I imagine this is gonna be pretty miserable. I remember, I, I couldn't put like words on it, but I really did not like my face for a very long time. In high school, I was one of the people that had like bangs down to here and then like a scarf up to here. And like as much of my face as I could obscure, I did until I was about like 17 or so. There's something about like my forehead that was just like too big. There's something about like, my nose and my mouth and my chin. People would like make comments about how big my chin is all the time. And um, I kind of like lost track of like what I actually looked like. I, w I wasn't able to like comprehend how other people perceived me and what I looked like. So there's always been like a weird dissonance with looking in the mirror. And that started around like 13 or so. Around 19, I had considered myself very gender fluid. The word non-binary wasn't really in geesh at that point, it wasn't in vogue. So everybody was like gender fluid. I had always had that like weird feeling of like dysphoria and things not matching up. I'm like, oh, I can use drag to channel that and then that will be enough for that and that'll be cool. That'll take care of that. I'll make some money. I can like, I love drag separately outside of that. It all comes together at that point. I was able to like create art on my own terms and like present it to people who like got it. I didn't have to explain it to anybody. They either enjoyed it or they didn't and more often than not they enjoyed it. But then there was the part where like 
wearing the clothes, looking the way that I wanted to look, having people call me she without me having to like explain anything. People would look at me and they wouldn't assume what I wanted to navigate the world as. They're like, oh, we're in the regalia, she. At first it was like more than enough because I had never really like given that far into like the femininity of it all. And over the course of like the next four to five years, it eventually wasn't enough at all. Unfortunately, I don't live my life surrounded nonstop by like my queer friends who know who I am and know how I want to navigate the world and like see me the way that I want to be seen. So this surgery is gonna allow me to move through the world in places and in situations where people don't know anything about me and they'll be able to view me the way that I want to be viewed. And that's really, really important to me. I'm working through a little bit of like a block of it not completely computing or like resonating that this is kind of like the last day with my face as I know it. Um, Cause I don't really know if your brain is set up to like comprehend something like that. I don't know, I feel like I'm a little bit of shock, mainly really, really excited, definitely nervous. Have you been? I've been good. I've been really, really busy, but I've been good. And <laughs> I'm glad that this is all working out and we got it all situated. Yeah, I see you on Instagram. It's, it's such a cool post. Thank you. Well, Bosco, go ahead and take your mask off. Sure. <clears throat> I want to go over the plan okay. with you and then show you kind of the, the bone before and afters of okay. what we plan, okay? So I want to just take a good look at your face one more time. Sure. Can you pull your hair back? Kim. Yeah. So we're planning one surgery. Mm -hmm. So starting from the top, it's an incision behind your hairline. Mm -hmm. So it's a hidden scar. So that way I can access the bones. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna lift your brows a little bit by taking a little strip out from the top and just pulling everything up by about a centimeter and a half. Okay. We're also gonna do a chin contouring. So that incision is gonna be on the inside of your gum line. Okay. And then filling some fat in your face. So areas that need a little bit right here in the temples right here along the cheeks, especially along here. And then the last part is your upper lip. You actually have pretty full lips. We just want to make the upper just slightly more full to match the bottom lip. This is you. Mm -hmm. This is before and this is after. Okay. So the red is the part that I'm going to contour and grind off essentially from the bone. This piece is the part that I have to take off, flatten, and then play back on. So you see, this is the prominence currently. That's mm -hmm. the shape. Afterwards, this is the goal, to make it completely smooth. I don't know how we did things before we had the studio space. I'm so excited that we have it now. It's like a weird, queer, commune, flea market, and it's just cool. There are five queens that share the space total. There's me and Irene. There's also Jane Don't, Queen Andrew, and Arietti that all use the space as well. Is this your pump up the jams moment? It sure is. I still haven't seen her. There's a slight continuity error in that I start the sh start the video off with no pants, and then <laughs> <laughs> the second half I come down the stairs wearing the pants that I tear away for some reason. Um, but we're just gonna chalk it up to camp. <laughs> I wouldn't say I have like a drag family. Like Irene is one of my best friends and sisters. Jane's 
kind of one of the other parts of that friendship and sisterhood. I met Bosco her first night out in drag. It was this party that our friend used to throw that was like a look party, so people would come and like do these kind of club looks. Nobody looked that polished. And then the the there was this one night where she like walked in in this like Sally Bowles like leopard print thing and she just looked like way more expensive than anybody at that party had ever looked. The incredible thing about being any kind of gender non-conforming, about being transgender, is that you get to create your own reality and you get to create your own body. You get to like transcend these like limited ideas about gender and, and biology. So I love it. I'm like, give every trans person all the surgeries they want. I think she'll just be a lot happier and a lot lighter and um, also a lot more beautiful, which none of us need. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying. Like I'm trying very hard to be like bubbly and nice and funny today, but I'm my pants. <laughs> I don't really like going to the doctors. There's a lot of dysphoria with like navigating the healthcare system as it is. I'm trying to find like a GP that's more queer friendly, more trans friendly, so I don't feel like I have to explain myself at every single doorway that we like pass through. None of this is a very comfortable thing for me to do. I'm a very anxious person, so my brain is focusing right now on a lot of like things that could go wrong, that very rarely do go wrong, but like complications that could happen. And then once I like push past those, because the likelihood of those is very, very low and we're doing everything to prevent those and like we've prepared very well, is like, what if I f up my face? What if this changes the way that my relationship works? What if this changes the way that I'm able to do my job? There's like a lot of what ifs on the table that I can't really process until we walk through that door. Right now I'm making um, my suffering for it where I'll be posted up for the next few days. It's gonna need more stuffed animals. Breaking out the big guns. I think talking with the doctors later today is going to help calm me down a little bit, but I mainly feel like it's out of my control, so, and this is what I wanted and worked really, really hard to get. So like, let's just do it. Let's just do it. My phone, my glasses case, charger. Is there anything else that you can think of that I need to bring? No, okay. Boys out. Now that the door's shut, people okay. aren't coming in and out. It was right after Pride 2019 is when I met her. I just watched her at a couple of shows and I was like, oh, this person looks interesting. So then I got really drunk one night and don't do this, but I went up to her at the bar and threw my arm around her. I was like, do you want to go to lunch sometime? <laughs> kind of started off right at right at our first date. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person to be like, what are your pronouns or whatever. But when she walked up and I was like, this person's not what I expected, I was like, I should probably ask. <laughs> it led into more conversations that, yeah, she wasn't comfortable identifying as male. Our relationship has had probably the most interesting roller coaster you can imagine. <laughs> In 2019, her mom unfortunately passed away, and then COVID hit, and then she lost her job, livelihood, everything. And I was in college at that time, so it was rough that anyways, and then national TV fame, and then now transition stuff. <laughs> um, we've been put through the ringer, but we've always done really well to have open communication and that kind of stuff, but overall I think healthy is a good word for it. I'm gonna dry my hair to get the last bit of water out, and then I think I'm good. Check the 
schedule again. I think I have to be there at 5.30. Do you think if we leave at like 5.15, that'll give us enough time to get there and park and get in by like 5.30, 5.35-ish? Or do you want to leave earlier? Mm, we just get there. Should we leave just right now? Mm. Okay. Let's do that then. Okay. Yeah, I think so. It feels like the best time to do it. Um, I'm not comfortable with aging as a man. So there's, there's like really hard changes that you have to make if you want to do that. I feel like I'm kind of at like um, a fork in the road where I have to decide how the rest of my life goes and how I want to navigate it. So now feels like the perfect time. And I feel like I finally have the support system and the money and the drive to do it. Top. My lips are really swollen and sore. It looks like it. Wanna be on the bed or on the couch? The first, the first thing I was like, well, wow, her forehead's flat already. <laughs> that's her, what she's been saying to me for years, is that's her biggest sense of insecurity, and seeing it gone, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I feel like I'm surfing so severely. If I went back on All Stars right now, RuPaul would have no choice but to crown me tonight. That's all first. A little bit delusional, I suppose. I was there before this. 
a lot of the ER nurses, not ER nurses, post-op nurses, refer to me as she without checking my chart. So we're set up already. <laughs> mm. Hey, Bosco, it's Dr. Lou. Hi, Dr. Lou. Hey, how are you feeling? Like I got run over by a car and then beat up. Yeah. Your pain and where specifically is it? Not bad. I'm just like a little uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. That's probably gonna get a little bit worse. Um, yep. Later this evening into tomorrow, as the numbing um, shots and the nerve blocks start to wear off a little bit. So definitely Pardon. make sure you stay on top of the the Tylenol. And then add on add on ibuprofen in two days. When can you shower, babe? Okay. I can shower in like two days when the head rub comes off, maybe. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Shower starting on Sunday, so in two days. Mm -hmm. um, and then apply the antibiotic ointment to your scalp incision. Okay. All right. And I'll see you back a little over a week. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a good night. See you soon. Bye. No thoughts, just vibes. <laughs> Took my frontal lobe out. Lobotomy is actually part of the FFS procedure. Rocks. <laughs> it does kind of look like you got a nose job. Yeah, I think he took a flat graph. I actually can see the dot on my head. And put some right there to smooth out how much that goes in. Mm -hmm. And I think that just kind of pinched everything up a little bit. Isn't that neat? So it's been about six weeks since we last spoke. My face has gone from looking like a pumpkin with eyelashes left out in the rain. And we're in a pretty cute spot right now. We're still definitely like healing. There's a lot of swelling throughout my jaw. And the fat transfers still need to settle a little bit, but we're kind of vibing. Like honestly, wasn't a whole lot of pain. Um, mainly just uncomfortable and weird. There's certain parts of my face that are still numb. And then like, get into this profile though. Like that's insane, that's just gone. It's honestly crazy how different people interact with me outside now. I, I don't know, it's, it's really crazy. People are a lot nicer to me in like day-to-day -day interactions. Just like face value when people like start talking to me, like a lot more smiles, a lot like more polite. If I'm like trying to get like luggage or something, somebody will like, come and like help me. Like. Just like weird little like social cues have completely switched that I wasn't even like plugged into before. It's just an immediate like no guessing or like kind of like flirting around like not understanding or not knowing or not being sure. It's like almost like an immediate she. And that's neato. <laughs> So I'm currently in LA and I am nervously sweating, preparing and getting ready for my face reveal party, which if that sounds like really vain and narcissistic, it's because it is, but I'm really, really excited. I haven't really made many known public appearances outside of like Seattle since the surgery. So this will kind of be my way to like reintroduce myself to the community, hang out with my friends, like, show trans women thriving 
succeeding, help them thrive and succeed. It's kind of like the sweet 16 I never had. I did have a cool moment today where my dad asked me for a picture because he hasn't seen me since the surgery. And he told me I was very pretty. And that was nice. That was a very cute moment. The way that I've always seen FFS happen is a gal will like drop off the face of the planet for a few months, show back up in like the public sphere, look beautiful, and like go right back to working. And like I just wanted things to be a little bit more open. I wanted to share just a little bit more of the process. I wanted to share a little bit more of like the humanity behind this surgery. And I really like attention. So if there's a way for us to combine those two things, that's what we were going to do. And I think there's something really John Waters and punk rock about throwing a patriotic themed face reveal in the gay district of LA. The Grand Diva Doll. Oh, hello. Yeah. Look at the beauty. Hi. How are you, baby? I'm so good. How are you? Oh, you, you look, look gorgeous. gorgeous. Amazing. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you for And they're unrecognizable. <laughs> 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 you. you look awesome. Oh, travel, Dr. Tommy Liu. So yeah, I know. It's, it's so good. like, it's still you, yeah, but just like soft. Yeah. Happy birthday, Moscow. Happy birthday, Moscow. Happy birthday, thing that people mainly take away from this is that this is an available procedure. This isn't scary. This isn't mad science. It's not mutilation. Like it's something that's helping me in my day to day life exponentially. It's just made it everything so much richer. everybody, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want Emmy-nominated gay <laughs> Well, then subscribe to RuPaul's Drag Race on YouTube.